What's going on everybody? My name is C4. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're here for a new Matter 24 realistic rebuild of the Kansas City Chiefs. Now you may be saying to yourself, whoa, you still got half the teams in the league to do. You're going to the dynasty? You're going to the team that doesn't lose when it matters? You're going to the most overpowered team in Matter 24? Yeah, because when it comes to teams like this, I need a reason. Like I feel like when, when you get a strike when the iron's hot to rebuild teams like this, like when we, it comes time for the Dolphins... The Bills, the Ravens, you know, the Chiefs. You look at maybe the 49ers. Like, a situation almost needs to arise for me to want to rebuild them sooner than later. And for the Kansas City Chiefs, one thing on top of this dining set they're building that I don't think is talked about enough is that it, it does kind of remind me of the Philadelphia Eagles a little bit. When the Eagles, really for the last couple of years, have been one of the best teams in Madden, the challenge of rebuilding them is not so much finding great players drafting great players and that that slow gradual buildup it's more of a maintain because your roster is kind of old your roster is very expensive you have big contracts in place it's can you find ways to keep the team together and when you can't keep certain players because they're just too expensive you don't have the money you gotta be able to replace them so you can keep playing at that high level and i think that is where this team is at because you got some guys on the offensive line that are going to need to get paid sooner than later you have guys that are already paid in kelsey and mahomes which you're going to have to find ways to navigate their contract. Pacheco's contract is going to be coming up at, at a, a certain point. On the defensive side, you've got to deal with this offseason. Chris Jones, who's arguably the best defensive tackle in the AFC, at least we'll say, with Aaron Donald still in the league. You have Legereus Sneed, who's an absolute baller at corner. Can you afford? Can you find a way to navigate the salary cap to get these guys under contract? So there's a challenge within itself. But that is not the reason why I want to rebuild the Kansas City Chiefs. Now... I'm going to try to delay the inevitable until the draft happens, but you already clicked on the video. You know what we're doing. There was a certain wide receiver who has lit up the football world from this previous combine weekend, and there's a certain quarterback that has been pretty, you know, he's been on Twitter. He's been on, like, the, you know, it's obviously it's, it is what it is. It's not anything concrete, but anytime Patrick Mahomes shows some interest in a wide receiver, you got to take note because Rasheed Rice, who's been – outstanding as a rookie he worked out with Patrick Mahomes in the offseason and all it takes is a little connection like that and a quarterback that has as much power and control on their roster as Patrick Mahomes does and I don't mean to say that as a negative I don't mean to say that as like he's overbearing I don't mean to say that like the same way that people are talking about like Aaron Rodgers bringing all his Packer guys with him to the Jets no I'm saying this more from a standpoint if you have a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes and you're the general manager you're Andy Reid you definitely want to pick his brain to see like what wide receivers do you want who do you think is going to fit this offense who do you want to bring in and clearly he co-signed Rasheed Rice and it seems like he co-signed a man that ran the fastest 40 yard dash we have ever seen officially at an NFL combine so I'm going to do everything in my power taking over as the GM here of the Kansas City Chiefs for the next five years to try to keep this dynasty going by getting Patrick Mahomes the wide receiver he wants from the 2024 NFL Draft. Now we got $48 million. We got to handle some free agency before we can get to the draft. And, um, hmm. We got to make the most. We got to stretch that money. And we, I know Edward Tillaire can go. Willie Gay would be a guy that I'd be interested in keeping. 26, homegrown linebacker here for the Chiefs. But the fact that there's no interest meter means we're going to have to overpay. And I really don't want to have to overpay. Mike Dana, edge rusher, is nice, but... We got uh, Enu DK, who's an or whatever, from K-State. We can put him and Carl Aftis on our pass rush going forward. Nadi uh, was a former top pick. Edwards is what it is. Hardman's kind of a gadget player. It really does come down to these two. And I'm surprised, man. I thought Steve would have a lot more interest. The fact that Chris Jones is showing this amount of interest leads me to believe that, you know, we'll go with him first because we don't have to overpay. With $23 million remaining, you don't want to let Jerry Sneed walk. But you also have to understand that it's very expensive to pay him. And you have Trent McDuffie, who's a dog. You could probably get younger. It's a lot of money, man. I, I, I think we'll go with the realistic approach. Because there's realistically no chance the Chiefs keep both these ones. And I do think this will be something where we re-sign Legereus Need. And maybe not next year. Maybe not this next offseason. But within the next two off seasons, we're going to regret paying both of these players with our limited salary cap. So we will let Legereus Sneed walk. We'll keep Chris Jones and help Trent McDuffie, which I have no doubts about it. He's an absolute stud 
Trent McDuffie can become corner one, and maybe we grab a corner in the second round, third round of this draft that has some upside to potentially start for us. We're also going to start by trading Charles Amen, who's a very underrated pass rusher for us. Great value. We're able to get a third round pick, one of the three third round picks, the lowest from the Arizona Cardinals, who did show interest, and they actually offered me more value than what I got. And I was like, I'll just take the third round pick. They offered me Garrett Williams, who knows an absolute dog, really good slot corner. They offered me a fourth, fifth, and a sixth. On top of all that, so like, let's take the player out. Because, I, you know, mm, don't necessarily need him right now. Give me the third. Give me the better value. Keep all your assets. And with that, Amenahu gone. It lets the rookie, Anudike, uh, who does have a dev trait, versus Amenahu who's on a normal dev. You know, you always got a game with the upside guys. After going through free agency, we do have $41 million. We have the release of MVS, which freed up about $10 bucks. Uh, we traded Amenahu, which did save us some salary cap. But ultimately, I think, still again... Even though there's no... It would have been cool. I'll tell you this. If somehow Legere Sneed's interest would have went back up, maybe I would have tried to squeeze that one in. But the fact that he still has no interest, hopefully he goes on to my Philadelphia Eagles. I think with this 41, we let it roll over so that we can make sure we maintain the core that we have here in Kansas City versus bringing someone in from the outside. At least this offseason. All right, it is time. The 2024 NFL Draft. All eyes on what... The reigning, defending, dynasty, Super Bowl champions are going to do. I'll tell you right now, even with our plan, if Romo Dunze was still there at 31, I might have called an audible last second. But I know all along the guy we want to get. And I'll tell you this, there is an argument right now. People are making the argument that what Brian Thomas Jr. did, he was 209 pounds running 4-3-4, was more impressive than what Xavier Worthy did. But the connect, I mean, this is what we're doing. It's like a theme thing, right? We're going to go out and grab him right now. 99 speed, 99 acceleration, Mr. 4 2 1. And we'll see. Can he be the next Tyreek Hill in Kansas City with Patrick Mahomes? All right, we need to do some damage. With We have pick 32, we have pick 27 and 32, second and third round. So that means three players. Honestly, we need to get some stars. We needed to do what the Chiefs tend to do, which is find value. And looking at what we're working with, honestly, we could we could double double up and go back to back wide receiver. I'm not gonna immediately eliminate that, but I, I do think in a perfect world, we do need a tackle. And it does not look like there's gonna be a great tackle available. Best of the bunch is probably Javon Foster here from Missouri, and you almost kind of wait, hope that you can wait and hit him there. We need a D tackle as well. And we do have Fisk, who was another standout from the Combine. Now, I don't know if he's going to be a D-tackle or more of a 3-4 kind of guy. But to have a little fun with it, let's go. Let's kind of make this a little bit of a Combine draft. Let's rock and roll with a man that looked incredibly athletic. Probably the most athletic D-tackle at the Combine this year. Made a lot of money this weekend. All right, we got two picks pretty much back-to-back -back here in the third round. Again, we need tackle. Javon Foster's still there, so we'll rip the Band-Aid off. I'm a big fan of him. And it was a PFF darling from the SEC. Usually those translate pretty well in the NFL. And with our final third round pick, I'm still looking at these wideouts. Like maybe, just maybe, that's where we need to go. We also have some corners. Dwight McLaughlin, Kalen Carson, a triple... Oh, Kalen Carson could be a dog that we're looking for. As our, as our secondary does retool a little bit this year, right? With Legereus Steed hitting the open market. Hmm... That is the question, though. Do we go wide receiver? Who are there? Still some dogs there. Xavier Leggett would be a bad at Malachi Corley, my boy out of Florida, Ricky Pearsall. Oh, Leggett ran 4 3. Do we just go out? But see, the thing is with the wide receivers, we have Rashid Rice. We still have Kadarius Tony, right? For, for whatever that is, there's still some value. He does have a dev trait. I think in that world, we kind of keep him as like our, as our utility guy. So, you know, we will grab. We'll go wide out. And let, well, you know, if this was just regular players from a generated draft class, not a Madden draft class, and we saw this, six feet tall, A, B man, B press, with pretty good, fastest 40-yard dash, we'd be drafting this corner every day of the week. So that's what we're going to do here. All right, so looking at our draft here, Xavier Worley, who was projected at where we're obviously we're picking to be in the second round. 75 with the hidden dev trait. Now, this is Bengals draft class, Texas Longhorn, Homer. So I always kind of figure he would fit, you know, like I, when I make mine. And maybe there's some Gators that I think are slept on. I might give them some juiced up stats. Uh, Xavier, well, I mean, I think that's reasonable. 75 catching, that is the concern. Some uh, questionable drops, which I think 
might scare Chiefs fans if this pick ever comes to fruition, because that's their issue. Okay, the city doesn't really have an issue with wide receivers getting open. It is catching the ball when Patrick Mahomes throws an absolute dime. So that is obviously a concern, but there is still so much to like about Xavier Worthy. It's definitely going to be a fun matchup. Forever breaks down. Fisk, even though he only had normal dev, still 72. Pretty good spot. Probably going to play a lot as a rookie, which could put him in a spot to get defensive rookie of the year. Foster, 68. Not my best pick. Carson, 72 in normal dev in the third round. We got Malachi Corley, 73 in the fourth. I was scared off. His letter grades were pretty terrible, but he's a big time, big time player. Man, one of my favorite wide receivers in this class. For whatever, I don't know why. Western Kentucky is a team that I just, I bet a lot on Western Kentucky. They're like underdogs a lot. Because he had that air raid offense. You could always, you know, going back to uh, Bailey Zappi, man. I've made a lot of money. Maybe more than any other team. The number one team that I bet on in college football, ridiculously to say, is Western Kentucky. They're almost, I like money line dogs. That's my favorite thing to bet. And Western Kentucky, out of any school, will get you those wins. And saw a lot of Malachi Corley. Jacked him. I believe he's Penn State. Was he? He was a transfer somewhere. I think it was Penn State. He's a dog. Uh, we got Tyrese Knight there in the fifth round. But I, I honestly, 73, that is a surprising rating for Malachi Corley based off of what I saw before I drafted him. He might have an opportunity to play for us here. Corley, Carson, Fisk, and Worthy, we might got four starters from this rookie class. This is pretty funny. Like, the amount of rebuilds I do, you pick up on things. The fact that the Chiefs, you always want to get the training camp stand-up because it's always a nice boost immediately, especially early in the rebuild. I get it. Maybe one in five rebuilds. Of course, the team in the rebuild that doesn't need it gets that role in our very first year. For Enrique Azuma, who's going to have to start, big shoes to fill. We're going to have an opportunity to play on the other side of Kyle Aftis. Gets a nice plus three power and finesse, which is funny though. Come on, man. The Chiefs don't need all the dev trait scenario roles as well on top of just being absolutely unstoppable in the sim. So they look at the offense here for year one. I did get a little creative. I moved Kadarius Tony from wide receiver to the running back spot. One is because, very surprised Malachi Corley with the rating at 74, and I feel like, you know, Tony's in the final year of his contract. There's no way we're going to resign him. So it's, I think it's best for the future of this team to potentially explore that option. Secondary, obviously Tony struggled with catching. Not a, really a great route runner. What makes him so good is his athleticism, his ability to make guys miss in space. And, I mean, he has the build of a guy that could make the move to running back. So I just figured let's get a little creative with him. Maybe this is the best way for him to integrate himself on the offense and or makes him a little bit more affordable to re-sign. Because right now he's probably not getting some re-signed IRL anyways. But the offense is hopefully going to run through Rasheed Rice, Xavier Worthy, and Travis Kelsey. Another thing I was thinking about on the offensive line, Trey Smith was a tackle in college and moved him inside the guard. So we could solve this issue that we have at left tackle by moving him there. However, he needs to get paid soon. And I'm thinking maybe we keep that in our bag and we pay him as a guard. A good guard's always going to cost less than a good tackle. And then once we get him under a guard contract, we kind of fuck him over and move him back to tackle. That's kind of my logic there. But obviously the interior of this offensive line is S tier. The tackles are a little bit worrisome. So hopefully Patrick Mahomes can compensate for that. On the defensive side, well, we're kind of rocking and rolling with a new front seven. Carl Aftis, Fisk, Chris Jones, and Enudike Uzuma get the start there on the D line. I would love to see Fisk get a dev trade here in his rookie season. Linebacker, well, we're not 3D, but hopefully we just run a lot of nickel with Leo Chanel and Nick Bolton. I do think you can get a little sub money backer out of Shamari Connor as well. We have Cook and Reed at safety. I think, like, obviously all three of these guys are getting on the field. We'll have some in the slot. Uh, Watson, McDuffie, and the rookie Carson at corner. We need McDuffie to give up a dead. I'm shocked he does not have a superstar dev, to be honest with you. I believe he was first team all pro. Just dogging him. I mean, let's be honest. So at the end of the day, how much more help does the Chiefs need from a Madden standpoint? Maybe they're just like, if we give him super shots, it's gonna be too overpowered. But we need him to step up. He needs to be, he's gonna be the guy. There's no more Legarius need here for him to uh to pass over. He's gonna have to go down and lock down wide receiver ones, and I think he has the talent to do so. But obviously, you know, this doesn't look like a super team, even though we know they're pretty damn good, even though I, I'm expecting success all five years of this rebuild. On paper, this looks, you know. We should be good, but how good will we really be? Let's find out. All right, one of these contracts early. This is week two. I want to get ahead of it. I want to see what kind of money we're working with. So we got two fifth-year options there, Kalaftis and McDuffie. Doable. Tony, we're going to probably, probably let him walk. But we got, ooh. Okay, Trey Smith needs to get first. Because I think, end of the day, I'm probably going to swing him to tackle. So we'll get him there. And that wasn't really that cheap. <laughs> Honestly, I thought it would be more cheap. 
Uh, we'll get Humphrey here on a four-year. Get him locked in for the remainder of the rebuild. We have Nick Bolton at linebacker. It's honestly a reasonable deal for a guy like him that still has some upside. Uh, we'd like to keep Justin Reed here, but I'd really only like to keep him here for three years. We'll see. He probably likes being here, but I th I'm thinking I don't want to overpay. There's not a lot of re-sign you know, re interest there. And, I mean, what do we got next year? Next year will be Pacheco that we'll probably want to try to keep on top of... I don't even know who else. So, again, not a rebuild that you want to be spending frivolously. You always want to be conscious about the next year that's coming up. We try to keep the core guys here together. And hopefully we can sprinkle in some good drafting on top of that. So I, I think we'll let Justin Reed walk and uh, roll over more cap. And, of course, the Chiefs' string of luck continues. Not only did we get the big buff in the preseason, we also early. It took us four weeks to get a dev trade, and that is Brian Cook, normal dev, starting free safety for a chance to get off his normal dev and go up to a star against Cincinnati Bengals. But the big thing going up from normal to star, it's not necessarily just the dev trade, which is huge, but you get that gigantic 20,000 XP boost, which always goes a long way. We lose, surprisingly. Wow, three and two. But did we get at least a silver lining of a breakout, which we did, and the rich get richer for specs. Oh, we got 10K. Is it 10K? Did I, did I miss... Is it sometimes 20 or is it always 10? Hmm. I thought it was 20. Maybe I'm tripping. I'll just say this. I'll interject week 12. It's absolutely hilarious that the first time I rebuild the Kansas City Chiefs is the one year that they're just fucking terrible in the sim. Like, my cat's sick of it. He can't even stand this. He's like, what? They win the Super Bowl almost every year. They're at least appearing in, like, the AFC Championship 95% of the time. First year I try rebuild the Chiefs. We're below 500. Classic. Not only that, we just lost to a one-win Browns team, baby. At minimum, though, we hit the uh, trench boost scenario, which is gigantic. It's one of the best ones you can get. Entire offensive line gets 10,000 XP. And I'm going to... We'll do it live. I'm going to interject. Something I think might be able to change our fates here just a little bit. I said I was going to do it once we paid him. But obviously, left tackle, from a sim standpoint, got to be one of the most important positions. So we are going to take... Mr. Trey Smith, after paying him, hopefully he won't be too disgruntled. And I'm going to move him to guard where he is valuable to protect the blind side of Patrick Mahomes where he's going to be a lot more valuable. Well, 10-7. and seven, We finished strong to finish with a somewhat respectable record, but I did not see my first year of a Chiefs rebuild not making the playoffs. Here we are. So it's good to know that the Chiefs are overpowered in the sim unless you're controlling them. I mean, Mahomes was on fire. Most touchdowns in the league. Top three in yards. You know, not going to complain. Pacheco was solid as well. Almost 1,012. On the receiving standpoint, 3,000-yard receivers. Rasheed Rice, 11-9. Travis Kelsey, 11-11. And, and the rookie, Xavier Worthy, 1,000 yards on 68 catches. Nine touchdowns on the year for the Stardev playmaker, with the speed, I mean, that's not bad. It's not bad. Dev trade, star dev. You know, it's one of those things in Madden. Madden will probably give him a superstar just because of breaking the 40-yard down. Maybe. maybe. I feel it would be fun to do that. Malachi Corley uh, also chipping in with some production there. On the defensive side, Leo Chanel was a tackle machine. The bad news is when it comes time to pay him, we're going to have to pay him like an edge rusher, which is going to suck ass. There's no other way to put it unless I move him inside the middle. I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do this. Honestly, that's actually probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to cheese it again because that's what Madden needs you to do. I'll probably move Nick Bolton, who we just paid, to left outside linebacker. And then move Leo Chanel inside to middle linebacker. And honestly, that's keeping it realistic, if you ask me. Because no way Leo Chanel is going to get paid $118 million like an edge rusher when it comes time for him to get paid. Chris Jones with 10 sacks, 8 sacks for Carl Aftis, 4.5 for uh, Azuma. Not elite production, but... You know, you throw in the run defense, the TFL, it's not bad across the board. Six picks for McDuffie. We needed him to step up by losing LeJarius Steed. He did it, all that and more in absolute dog. Taking a look at the yearly awards. MVP goes to Lamar Jackson. Patrick Mahomes finishing within the top five for individual awards. Uh, well, we got Leo Chanel up there for Defensive Player of the Year voting. That is pretty cool. Xavier Worthy, runner-up for Offensive Rookie there. He's losing out to Malik Neighbors who went to the Dolphins because... Of course, they needed another wide receiver. Malachi Corley just outside the top five. And on the defensive side of the ball, uh, shout out Fisk for making the top ten 
more of an honorable mention for individual awards. I don't think we're going to have anybody outside of, yes, sir, Trent McDuffie. So he's on that star depth, should get a bump up to a superstar. But there's no amount of glossing and, and, and just cheesing up and, you know, gassing up all those stats. The fact of the matter is we did not make the playoffs. That is a complete and utter failure for the standard that we try to set for the Chiefs. All right, the offseason, we're going to pick up the fifth-year option on McDuffie, who is now a superstar dev, as well, Mr. George Karlaftis. I also went ahead and moved Bolton outside linebacker, Chanel inside the middle, so that uh, we can uh, have somewhat of a realistic roster here. So looking at free agency, where we need to improve, one would be wide receiver if there was an absolute dog, but I think I want to go forward with the group that we have. We do need a guard with moving Trey Smith. To tackle, we now have an open guard spot. and would love to get something of, of value if we can find one. But guard's not a position that usually has, you know, it's not, a, it's not a fun position to go window shopping for. We might actually need to kick guard to maybe a secondary need for us. Look at it first round. Now we actually have kind of a higher pick, which the Chiefs aren't used to. Uh, maybe we look at corner and then, say, in the second round, go for the best interior lineman available. That can slide into that guard spot. I mean, the D-line was solid this year. I don't think that's a position that unless there was someone that was super interested in joining our team and had the dev traits and background pedigree to back it up, uh, we're probably going to chill on that front. Mm, could use another linebacker. I like Diablo's a little interesting. Not, not gigantic cap hit, but it's also like I feel like just get a lot, you know, find someone in the in the draft that's going to be on that rookie contract. That's that's our best our best option there. We have Greg Newsom. So Jerry Steen was looking for pretty much nineteen million dollars per year. Newsom was looking for about thirteen. We didn't want to go him. We want to go secondary options. There's not much there, but the biggest difference is there's actually interest there from Newsom. Which we did not have from Legarius Sneed. We'll offer him this offer and see where, where that puts us in terms of bidding. And we'll see. I mean, there's a lot of options there. I think given those teams, the Rams, the Giants, the Steelers, or the freaking Chiefs, seems like a pretty obvious choice. But you never know where these guys want to go. We also lost Jordan Reed to free agency. But I do like the two safeties we have. Cook got his dev trait. Shamari Connor, I think, is an absolute playmaker. So I think we might just go with Connor at safety, plus now being a full-time normal dev safety in Connor, taking over Justin Reed. Could put him himself like Cook did last year, in which he gets that dev trait, that XP boost, and we're laughing. So we'll see where Greg Newsom wants to go. Not here. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll roll that cap over. All right, let's talk on my ass a little bit. I didn't look at the dev traits. So right before the draft, obviously, I want to reaffirm what I thought I needed to do going into the draft, where offensively we need a guard. After we move Trey Smith to tackle. So it's like, all right, well, I did scout a couple guards. We're fine. Load at the rest of the roster. Maybe get a success for Travis Kelsey on the roster. But that's very much a secondary. We need a guard. Uh, by not spending big money in free agency this year, it should make, I believe, Pacheco and Leo Chanel are going to be two free agents that we're going to have to try to sign. It's going to make it that much easier. But you look at the offense, get a guard, we feel pretty good. But on the defense, I was like, wait, let's put Connor at safety. Maybe we'll go up Dev Trade. He got Dev Trade last year. I forgot I made him our starting nickel. So, played enough to get a dev trait. We have Cook who got a dev trait. Leo Chanel got a dev trait. Now playing middle linebacker. Uh, we have the superstar earned by McNuffie for getting DB of the year after a 6. And really, the only bummer was that Fisk, our second round pick, did not go up dev trait. Played the full season as a normal. But I think getting three of the four is pretty damn good. So, need a guard. Could use some help there at third linebacker, even though we primarily just run with Bolton and Chanel on the field. It's always good having that depth. You know, someone with upside at corner, like that'd be, you know, I'm going to look at Will Johnson out of Michigan, Benjamin Morrison out of Notre Dame. Those are two guys that could be in our pick range that would look real nice next to McDuffie here for the upcoming draft. So I'm going to wait long. Usually the Chiefs are used to picking in the 30s. We are picking at 17. Let's take a look at what the board looks like here. And Will Johnson, welcome to the Chiefs. Not even get a second thinking. We need him. You're going to be a day one starter. Let's go. Now the second round at pick 17, remember the needs. Linebacker, not a huge need. Wide receiver, successor, if you will, to Kelsey. 
which, you you know, you get these big wide receivers like Nick Anderson out of Oklahoma. Makes you think about it. But we need guard, ideally. There's someone here that can at least play guard. And we have a left guard. We have Caden Green. We have Zach Rice, who I scouted fully. Looks pretty good. Five-star recruit. Former five-star recruit, obviously. Uh, B pass block. B run block. Bench press, not bad. Athletically speaking, kind of average. Um... That Colby, we just used him in a rebuild, though. We got Tyler Booker, who has double Bs. And at 6'5", 335, probably is a better bench press. Elite, change of direction, great strength. Might be the guy here. Might need to go Booker. I mean, let's see. We look at the tight ends. You know, Jack Felling was Pac-12 tight end of the year. But I think we might be able to wait just a little bit. What do we got at linebacker? In terms of, like, Greg Penn, Lander Barton. Perkins, we've used him a couple times. Uh, safety, again, not much. Shador Sanders, or Sh uh, Shiloh Sanders, if you want to. I think, well, let's go with the Bama guard here, Booker. You got to beat a 71 overall kid. No dev trait, which kind of sucks, but at 335, come with 83 acceleration, 90 strength. Looks pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely 70 plus, if I had to guess. Third round, I'm going with my favorite running back that's not talked about enough in all of college football. There's got to be, you know, the discussions. Nicholas Singleton from Penn State. Ollie Gordon, Oklahoma State. Maybe my favorite from just watching him play is Damian Martinez out of Oregon State. Absolute dog. We got the hidden dev. And you are going to be not only a contributor, but you are going to be the insurance in case Pacheco doesn't want to resign. Or maybe even enough to be like, we don't even need to target Pacheco because we got you on the roster. Something we got at least, we got the option to have that discussion, which means it's a great pick in the third round. So take a look at our draft recap, and we get a top five true talent player, as only the Kansas City Chiefs could have fallen into her lap. In Will Johnson, 79 overall, hidden dev, out the gate, prolific athlete. Honestly shocked he's there. Usually he goes in the top 10. Tyler Booker in the second round, 71. So it's, it's the same as Foster, but he'll likely be a day one starter. Damian Martinez, 74 with a hidden dev. Got another hidden dev in the fourth round, one of my favorite tight ends. Again, another underrated player, Terrence Ferguson. Out of Oregon. You look at the Oregon tight ends. Everyone was talking about Justin Herbert's brother there. Ferguson is a dog. Has some ridiculous catches on his highlight reel. Has that dev trait to learn and be the understudy to Mr. Kelsey. We have Cade Klubnik. Uh, former five-star recruit. Mr. All-World from Clemson. Hasn't really panned out just yet. But it's, it's still a little early to call him a bust or whatever you'd want to at Clemson. It's, you know, nice little backup there. But he's never going to play. But it is what it is. And we got a couple death players there to round out. But... Two hidden dev players in the middle rounds. An outstanding top five, two talent player in the first round. It's not going to get that much better for the Kansas City Chiefs as we shockingly didn't make the playoffs year one and hopefully that'll never happen again. So a much better start here in year two. Just beat the Eagles who were once just undefeated, but not anymore. 35-27 on the back of an outstanding performance of Patrick Mahomes. 300 yards, four tuds. As that is a nice win to go in. Hopefully that momentum into contract negotiations. Again, we've been very light in free agency with the idea of we want to be able to keep our homegrown talent. This is exactly why. I'm sorry. But Isaiah Pacheco was not worth $50 million. Awesome player. Fun player. Great diving in the rough. This is why I'm doing this early because now we're just going to make Martinez our running back one. It's a cruel business. The handling of Leo Chenault. Now, was it all without, you know, losses, right? Moving, you know, you just think, oh, we just moved Chenault from outside linebacker to middle linebacker. There was a rating drop. He was an 84 outside linebacker. And he went down to an 81. So we did handicap ourselves a little bit in terms of his talent, but easily saved $30 million on the open market. So we'll do that. We have Brian Cook, who's developed into a really nice starter. And that's just insane value for an 80 star dev player. Getting a little bit of a homegrown discount. That's going to allow us now to spend big money on Joe Tooney on the offensive line. Keep those guys there together. Oh, boy. We got Mr. Kelsey. We got the fifth year option there. Oh, no. How much? How much, sir? I saw, sir. How much? That's, that's the glue. He was... His contract status, being in limbo, is why... Oh, man. We, we'll, I think we'll... If Kelsey doesn't retire, I think we'll have enough when we get the added uh, salary cap at the end of the year to resign him. Because I'm not... I, you know, he needs to retire at Kansas City Chief. But you know what? I think the reason why we didn't make the playoffs last year is because there wasn't financial security, peace of mind for Keith Taylor. Now that that is settled, he's pretty much Spag's second set of eyes that are on the defense. 
we're gonna win the Super Bowl this year. At the end of year number two, we go 13 and four, which is more in line with where we need to be as a squad. And we get to battle right out in the AFC West here in the Wild Cup round against the LA Chargers. Taking a look at the stats, Mahomes uh, back on top, first in yards, top five in touchdowns, continues to be absolutely elite. The switch at a little after midseason to Martinez. I mean, look at that. They have the touchdowns are outstanding. And I feel pretty confident about him going forward as our RB1 and not paying $50 million. To Mr. Pacheco, Rasheed Rice in the slot, 1,100 yards, 12 touchdowns, 1,008 for Kelsey, just under 1,000 for Xavier Worthy, and almost fourth. We're very close to having 4,000 yard receivers, but obviously, as the man, the face of this rebuild a little bit, uh, would be cool to see Xavier Worthy eat. I did have him in the slot last year. I tried just putting him back on the outside. Maybe that's where his good best spot is going to be um, going forward. Nick Bolton and Chanel, both with great tackles. Uh, 11 and a half sacks, Chris Jones, six and a half per left is six from Fisk inside. We got six picks again from McDuffie. Leo Chanel, outstanding production. Hey, maybe we found something moving him inside. Seven TFLs, four sacks, four interceptions, more production than what he was getting as an outside linebacker. Four picks there from Jalen Watson. A you know, respectable season, all things considered. Generally, I don't get great interception numbers in Madden Rebuild, so we will take that. As Mahomes finishes in the top five for the MVP race, as far as as outright winners, Damian Martinez, the new RB1 here in Kansas City, wins Offensive Rookie of the Year with those 18 rushing touchdowns. So we're laughing going forward with our rushing attack on the defensive side. Uh, Will Johnson there at number eight for individual awards. Rasheed Rice is wide receiver of the year. He's on that star dev, so that could be a superstar dev bump. And knowing that that is the kind of potential you can get by a slot wide receiver. What's up, Kitty? Um, definitely we will look at moving Xavier Worthy back to that slot spot. Uh, going forward, Trent McDuffie wins DB of the year after another six interception season. Also, I will say shout out because you're in the realistic draft class. Travis Hunt for balling out of control there. Jalen Watson making the top five. I love everything about it. And finally, we have the team success to go with the individual success that we had last year. Let's see if we can go on a little bit of a run as we start things off against the 9-8 and eight LA Chargers. Solid team, not a great prolific sim team, and we handle business 26-21 Going to the division round against the 12 and 5 Tua Tago Vailoa led Miami Dolphins. It is the number one offense against the number two def uh, number two offense. They have a little bit better defense than we do, so we're gonna go in here. We're gonna auto spend our points so that we ensure we go with the strongest team possible to try and get past the Dolphins into the AFC Championship game here in year two of this five year rebuild, and we lose a close one, one score game against the Dolphins, 28 to 21. In a matchup that Nick Bolton had a hell of a game. Just, damn. Again, I, I still feel, after two seasons, the Chiefs are, like, never this bad when you're playing as any other team but the Chiefs. It's not too often. Kansas City goes two years in a Madden 24 franchise without making the Super Bowl, let alone winning it. And here we are staring, going on year three with not a lot of postseason success. Maybe annoyingly enough, we all know. We've seen enough franchise. Kansas City and Dallas are like the two cheap. Dallas has won the Super Bowl back-to-back -back years. So they're, uh... Where's our good role, huh? I don't even need a good... I, don't, I take that back. We don't even need a good role. Where's the just the Chiefs playing like the Chiefs? Because Dallas is playing like Dallas. Why aren't we doing the goddamn exact same? As far as retirements are concerned, always going to peep this because we have Kelsey, who is looking for more money. He does not retire, so we got to make sure we keep him on the roster. All right, so for free agency, we're going to pick up the fifth-year option of Uzuma, who's developing nicely, I think, all things considered. We have Travis Kelsey, Jalen Watson, who's coming off actually a respectable year. He's not looking for a crazy amount of money, but he's at that age where, like, is he at his ceiling? He is interested to resign. We'll see. Two-year deal. Coming off four picks. Pretty good. But Kelsey is the man of the hour. Two years. Interest meter is there, and he is going to make sure. Retire finished his entire career as a Kansas City Chief. Two more years of him. Might not get the full two. Let's try to get another Super Bowl within that two. Shout out to the New Heights podcast. But I'm going to be honest, this is just another situation where I don't think it's going to be worth it to spend money. We don't have a lot of salary cap at this point. It's bode us well to not spend on the open market and just keep rolling over that salary cap to re-sign our own guys. Deron Bland's interesting because corner has been a spot that we were trying to re you know invest in, but we have Watson who had four picks. We got Will Johnson, who's a dog, our first rounder. Obviously, Trent McDuffie, we've seen him excel. Our safeties are good. Our linebackers are good. Our D-line is pretty good. There's no real needs for us, let alone getting like some expensive 
short-term type veteran. So again, we're going to sit out this free agency and do our damage during the draft. So as we start this draft, a um, couple things. One is just upside wide receiver. I focused out at two wide receivers that look pretty good just because, you know, the development has not been gigantic at that spot. We don't have that X factor. We don't have that superstar yet. Oh, I'm annoyed Flanagan's there. I did not think he'd be available to us. Um, because my other thing would be outside of wide receiver, which I'll show you the two that I scouted. We'll see if they're still there. One is Felix Hodges, who we did. Burner. Three Bs and a C. Five foot eleven. But, you know, the four five for a guy that has truly elite speed. Not the best. And I did also scout a later round wide receiver down here. And that is Taylor Ruiz. Six six. Two twenty five out of Texas. A double B and a C. And ran a four five. Has the ridiculous vert. That's, that's usually one of those big guys that you see that has to go tough. We're going to be able to get that guy overreach. I'll draft him in the second round. Uh, so I need a tackle, right? Because very expensive, very average is Jawan Taylor right now. Like you look at where this team could immediately be better at, and it's going to be that spot. He's an overpaid, overrated tackle. I mean, not overrated, but it's a little harsh. But we got 6'6. Six, six. This guy's built like a tackle. But we did not scout him because I was like, he's not going to be available. So Brian Flanagan's there, which is interesting. We got DeAndre Spray. He looks good, but that's not a tackle. 6'3", too short. Sam Dillard, who I did scout because he had A pass block. Only a C run block. Elite change direction. Pretty good athlete across the board. We also have an actual tackle that looked pretty decent. Still available in Compton. Another first rounder. 6'6", six, six, out of Florida. He looks pretty damn good as well. Let's go with the tackle here. Yes, we get the dev trait. Might be able to get and save a little bit of salary cap by Jawan Taylor. I'm not 100% sure what his contract looks like. And now in the second round, let's ensure we get that freak wide receiver out of Texas. And I think that's a pretty good draft. Let's be honest. There's no way that a guy that's 6'6 six, at six tests like that would be available at pick 27. But if he was, you know a team like the Kansas City Chiefs would be just like, oh, really? He fell to us? All right, I guess we'll draft him. No worries about it. Ridiculous. So stupid. Thanks. All right, a little peek at draft recap. Very interesting to see what we got. Usually tackles, it's tough to get them above a 75. And that's what we got here in Compton. 71 with the hidden dev. But again, I think we, we definitely need to reevaluate the contract on Jawan Taylor. See where we're at. See what we can get out of it. And whether or not we give Compton the starting job right away. Probably likely. And then we got Ruiz, who absolute dog, insane value. Thanks for letting him become a chief. Imagine Mahomes with this guy. Not only with him, the fact that, hey, could be a tight end at some point down the line. Rest of the draft, not particularly good, but I'm very happy with those first two picks. We got our two guys. Year three for the Kansas City Chiefs. Here's kind of how things are looking. I think we got to go Jawan Taylor as our starter and just let him walk this offseason. That, that's too big of a discrepancy. He'll develop, Compton will develop nicely to take over. But, uh, you know, we got to try to win right now. Martinez winning uh, the Offensive Rookie of the Year last year. Makes a jump from star up to a superstar. Rasheed Rice is a superstar being wide receiver of the year. I have moved Xavier Worthy into that slot position to see if we can get similar growth for the face of this rebuild. On the defensive side, Dev Trades remain fairly consistent. McDuffie, back-to-back -back DB of the year. Bunch of picks. He's a X factor. Will Johnson was a superstar out the gate. However, hasn't been all sunshine and roses. Shamari Connor, for some reason, lost. His star dev, which I think is a little harsh, but still a very nice player. Not too worried about it. Specialist, looking pretty good. Got Xavier Worthy in the slot. Martinez, all these guys are looking good and looking ready to not only win the division again, but finally here in year three, get a freaking Super Bowl. Three point of year three, we are, we're playing like the Chiefs now. I don't know what the hell happened year one, but we're eight and one, sitting atop the West. And this has been always, you know, tight butthole time for a lack of something less vulgar because there's always just so much talent and they only have so much money luckily we did get Jawan taylor's replacement so there's gonna be 20 some million bucks we can save uh we'll start with shamari connor who's been solid for us i think we might be able to get a little bit of a bargain here and absolutely not okay well we got carl aftis who's been very solid very consistent i don't know about 20 mil a year solid consistent but we'll get him locked in we have mcduffie absolute stud proven thriving um Here's where things get a little tight. Well, we're not going to be able to pay you. And 
maybe can pay Rasheed Rice. Hey, here we go. We keep Rice in town. Now, Chris Jones is looking for $30 million. I just, I don't know. I feel like we can get Shamari Connor with this remaining money and then just hope and pray something happens. Like, I don't want to say it, but if Kelsey retires, maybe we can shuffle that money to Chris Jones. But it is not looking good for us being able to re you know, re-sign Stone Cold Jones here, which, I mean, hey, a little bit more pressure to try to get this Super Bowl year three. We've secured the first round by here in year three. 14-3 and three record, our second divisional title of the rebuild. And Patrick Mahomes... Yep, he's Patrick Mahomes. First in yards, first in touchdowns, 40 touchdowns, 5,100 yards. Damian Martinez, I mean, obviously, there's only so much yards to go around when you're having this much of a passing attack. So if you're not going to get 1,000 yards, you better be getting 17 touchdowns for the power back out of Oregon State. Xavier Worthy now in the slot. Yep, that's what we're looking for. 105 catches, 1,400 yards, 12 touch, 12 and 10 for Rasheed Rice, 12 and 9 for what, I mean, from this point on, could be the final year for Travis Kelsey. So if he does go out on top this year, insane we got seven and seven from Corley great role player defensively Chanel and Bolton tackle machines 14 sacks from Chris Jones who hopefully there is a way we can find a way to keep him in the building uh maybe there'll be some rating regression so that cap number that price that he's looking for will come down a little bit and we get an influx uh collapse is eight and a half eight and a half for Fisk which is great and interceptions did kind of fall off a cliff this year but kind of is what it is uh Yuli Awards MVP let's go Rest of the awards for just more so looking for Chiefs. Creed Humphrey, best lineman. I mean, he's on a star dev. That should bump him back up to a superstar, which is probably very well deserved. And just out of curiosity, Casey does retire to say that we looked at it. Almost 1,200 catches, 14,000 yards, 100 plus touch for Kelsey. Pretty insane. All right, I got a little guest here. Say hi. Uh, we're going to try to go. This is good luck for the playoff run. And if we lose. I can't swear because uh, that would be me a bad person. So first round of the playoffs, we have the Dolphins. You like the Dolphins? You like Dolphins? Mm. Well, we beat them, so hopefully you didn't like them too much. 35-21. <laughs> yeah? Can you say Mahomes? Yeah. No. Say Mahomes. No. No. Well, he was really good. Four touchdowns, and we're rocking and rolling. And we are in the championship against Buffalo, a rivalry, if you will, between two teams in the AFC that didn't maybe exist before the quarterbacks were in place. Let's see. Can you hold that? That would be good luck. All right, we're going to go. Good luck. A good luck sim here. Trying to get to the Super Bowl. Or are you bad luck? You're good luck. We won. We won. Yay, we're the team that wins everything, but we won here, and it's exciting because we haven't won a whole lot. All right, we are in the Super Bowl. Are you going to stick around for the Super Bowl? You want to see if we can win this one, or are you going? I'm You're going? All right, say bye. Say bye. Bye. Get those. All right, let's go into the Super Bowl. We got the Tampa Bay Bucks, who have a really good defense, number two defense. In the, uh, in the NFL here. But can they stop Mahomes? Probably not. I almost feel like, you know, we usually enact three times we can hop in on the sticks rule. I don't know if we need to do that with the Chiefs. You know, should feel like this, this is a team that's good enough to get over the line by themselves. Tampa Bay strikes first. It is all Tampa Bay in the first half. But let's be honest. I personally, first-hand experience, a slow-starting Chiefs team. And it's just, you know, almost inevitable. That they will find a way to get going in the second half. Let's see what they can do in what could be the final game for not only Travis Kelsey, but Chris Jones in a Chiefs uniform. Year three of a fiery wheel. We're tied 15 15. Very weird score line. But who can we trust if you can't trust Mr. Patrick Mahomes to get you a score here? Fourth and 19. Wow. We lost the Super Bowl. It's, we lost the magic touch. Good luck just went out the freaking door there. Wow. Drake May. No. Damn. All right. Well, we got two years left. Make some magic happen. So while we were maybe a little bit hope, I don't want to say hoping because he's an awesome player, but almost banking a little bit. Maybe Kelsey retires to get that salary cap. Uh, we, in fact, did not get that salary cap because he is running it back for another year. I've looked at it. There's just no way. We could restructure contracts. That's just going to crush us and kill us in year five. 
So we're going to have to move on, unfortunately, from Chris Jones, one of the greatest defenders to ever wear a Chiefs uniform. And not only that, there's no way we're going to replace him in the next two years. All right, well, you all saw the number I saw, $7 million, couldn't re-sign him. Now we somehow have 42. And I was like, oh, did Kelsey retire? No, we just got a lot of money somehow. Don't know how, but we did. So let's make this, uh, let's make this happen. Now, that would be fun, but I, I think we all can agree, much more important to get Chris Jones. And uh, that's all we're going to do. We're going to go in, have another stellar draft. Maybe this year, prioritize trying to get a D-tackle in case we can't bring him back on these one years over and over again. All right, we're in the draft. Now, I'm actually shocked. I scouted three D-tackles. All three of them were rounds one, two projection. So I thought surely one would still be available at pick 31. Nope. All gone. So look at the D-tackles. We do have your cheesy nose tackle pick. That actually looks pretty good. And Johnny Jackson, 330. Elite strength. Do you love the 40s pretty good. But we could also get creative with this pick. We have Joseph Bose, 305. DN clearly would be a D tackle, A tackle, B power move. And then when you look at it, 486. Like if this guy was a D tackle, I don't even think we'd be running this one. Because usually you get that, if you see somebody get the D tackles at like 295, 280 something, 305. I think this is our pick. And we move him inside the D tackle. And we get the dev trait roll. Let's go. Potential success over Chris Jones. Even though, ideally, in a perfect world, we have Chris Jones finish out this rebuild. Financially, I don't know if that can become a real reality. And look at our draft recap. Felt pretty good about the first couple of rounds. Got a 73-72 on the interior. Ben Lewis, center. Obviously, we don't need a center with Creed Humphrey. It's more so just depth. Potentially can move him across the line. Charlos Cheeks out of Florida. Another dev trait lineman, which you'd love to see. But the big fish is Joseph Bo. 74 overall defensive end. And I'm actually curious whether or not that rating is going to jump up when we move in the defensive tackle. You're always worried when you manipulate stuff like this that the rating's going to go down and you're losing value on your pick. I think there's a shot. It goes from a 73, I can see him even 75. And a D tackle, that's exactly what he is. Let's go, what a pick. Year four, looking to get back to a Super Bowl. Record's not great, but actually, let's sim this one here because this could and will decide who first place is. I wrote midseason in the AFC West between the Chargers and the Chiefs. Can we beat Dallas? Let's actually roll another one here into the bye week. We lose, but if we can bounce right back with a win. All right, again, it's just, um, of course, when we're the Chiefs as the uh, as the main team, that's when we just struggle for whatever reason. And uh, whenever you're not, they are undefeated. You can't beat them. Uh, look at that contracts here. Well, let's see if we can get Chris Jones locked in for the remainder of the rebuild, which we are able to do. No worries. We have Azuma here. Well, let's be honest, I we could probably go cheaper there at Edge Rusher, spend our money elsewhere. Uh, and everyone else is kind of just role players. I do think in a perfect world, ooh. Yeah, all right. That's where our money's gone. Chris Jones and Travis Kelsey yet again. Got to close out year four in classic Chiefs fashion. Look, the middle of the mall type team, midway point. Finished out strong, get our third divisional title going 12-5. and five. No first round bye this year. But Patrick Mahomes continues to be and uh, dominate. I mean, maybe the MVP again. Second MVP potentially of the rebuild. 1,000 yards for Damian Martinez. Rice, worthy, worthy, insane. 1,200 yards, 13 touchdowns. Kelsey and Ageless Wonder. And we were very close to having four. I don't know if I've ever got 4,000 yard receivers. It's disgusting. Disgusting numbers across the board. Leo Chanel, a tackle machine. Carl Laftis stepped up big time. Fisk was solid. Uh, Chris Jones' production starting to slip just a little bit. Even then, though, 23 TFLs are ridiculous numbers. Three picks, Shamari Connor leading the team. Look at the yearly awards. Oh, wow. That's a little that's a little bit dogging him a little bit there. Only five from Holmes being first in yards, second in touchdowns. They ripped him off there a little bit. We're looking for the rest of the awards. I don't think we're going to have anybody. Fortunately, we do not. But still, good season. Maybe that's what we need. We need to be a little bit more humbler. In the individual stats, and maybe that's the missing piece. And focus more on a team effort here in the postseason to go deep on these runs. We handle business in the first round, defeating the Pittsburgh Steelers 31 17. Mahomes doing Mahomes like things. As we see Drake Bay on the other side, who defeated us last year in the Super Bowl, we're trying to get back there. We have Miami, who we've met before in the playoffs. They've been pretty damn good. We got McDuffie there getting his 99 gold gloves. And let's see how we can handle business here against the Dolphins, trying to make it back to Super We're running out of time. 
This is year four. How? I would say this. I would bet we fucking lose. We've only had one rebuild. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We've done twelve realistic rebuilds. We are eleven Super Bowl wins with one loss. The one loss was the Denver Broncos. I would have bet a thousand dollars that the Chiefs was like that's an automatic Super Bowl check mark win. If we don't, which we come down to your five Super Bowl or a bust, someone could have been getting a thousand dollars richer. But it's insane. And just Kelsey never wants to retire, I guess. Now, we only have $3 million remaining, so we're going to pick up the fifth-year option of Will Johnson. Um, you know, Azuma replaceable. I would like Corley back in a perfect world, but I almost feel like anybody in that wide receiver spot will eat. Uh, depth guys across the board. I will say the one that's like, it's a loss, is Joe Tooney on the offensive line. That's just a lot of money. But I do think in a perfect world, much like last year, where we had, what, $7 million, and then we go to the first week of the offseason, we have 40 In a perfect world, we will be able to bring back Joe Tooney with an influx of cash, but obviously, as of right now, we are $15 million short. Okay, we got an influx. Now we're up to 16 but I still think that is oh, the price range of bringing in a Joe Tooney. We did draft a couple hidden dev linemen, which, I mean, you can kind of just throw them into that spot. Yeah, we don't have enough to bring back Joe Tooney, which sucks. But we do have a contingency plan in place by how we drafted last year. But with this 16 mil, can we invest this so we can put everything... Maybe bring back Azuma. That is now a hole there on the defensive line. Let's do it. Let's at least offer him. Three years, $47 million. For him to probably just say F us and go to Buffalo. Yep. All right. It will be aggressive in the draft. All right. We found an edge rusher. I don't know if he's going to be the best, but I'm... Gambling is going to be pretty good. And it looks like there's slight value here in Andrew Alexander, the speed rusher. He's not top five. A pursuit, B block shed. The physicals, elite and great in speed and acceleration. Good strength. So he's second in the bench press. First three cone, 40 is good. And then you just break down the skills. A pursuit, A finesse, A awareness, B block shed. That's the guy we want. And he's not top five, so like there's a shot that it's not going to cost us an arm and a leg to go get him. But looking at where he is currently mocked, so we want pick seven. And looking at what these Saints want for pick seven. The other one, Will Johnson, Creed Humphrey, a bunch of picks. And congratulations, you're getting a bunch of picks. Now, when you make a trade like that, one of two things need to happen. One is sometimes the mock drafts lie to you, and Alexander might not even be there at pick seven. Should be. Secondly, when you make those big-time trades... There's a certain expectation that, like, they have to be outstanding. Like, this guy has to be super elite. Min first hurdle, minimum, a dev trade, hidden dev, which we got. Athletic profile looks insane. 91 acceleration, 85 seed, pretty good strength. Looks pretty goddamn well-rounded. But now, it moves to like, yes, okay, we got the first check mark. He's a dev trade. Now, that's a star dev. It's not a superstar, not an X factor. You know, you can't be trading all of those picks. Mortgage in the future, even if it doesn't exist. For the context of this rebuild, you still want to make smart decisions in a realistic rebuild. This guy needs to be at least a superstar to justify the price tag we just paid to get him at pick seven. All right, drum roll. We're not going to find out the dev tree, but say, hell yeah. We will take 77 hidden dev, 78 with the boost. Now, we got to move him down to defensive end. I think we're going to make him a right defensive end. Could be left, but I think it's right. So, he goes from 77. Sometimes you can have it. It shouldn't fluctuate, and it doesn't. That's nice. 77 hidden dev. We got a 75. Hidden Dev in the third round. Great value continuing just to, to you know, stockpile great tight ends behind Kelsey. The rest of the draft, kind of a nothing burger. But those are outstanding first picks. And it's very rare, especially on, a, yeah, just the context. This is not just a regular, this is a Chiefs freaking rebuild. A super team that we are somehow finding ways on every single turn to struggle with to get a day one starter going into year five of a rebuild. All right, in words I never thought I'd have to say, we are here, year five, Super Bowl or bust with the Chiefs. Now, I mean, you look at the offense, Kelsey has regressed down a little bit, but he's still a big-time player. Offense line is very good. Skill position spots, Damian Martinez, Rice, Mahomes, got freaking... Xavier Worthy, the main of the rebuild, up to a 92 X-Factor after his ridiculous season last year. We're going to reward it with a captain spot. Mr. 4-2-1. From 75, catching up to 90. He has learned a lot being here in Kansas City with Andy Reid and company. Defense has been a little bit more difficult. 
to keep all together, but make the splash move to get an edge rusher here to hopefully help our sack numbers get back up. Rock and roll with the linebackers. Feel really, really good about the secondary, led by 99 McDuffie. We did lose his X Factor, but still a superstar. Very good. Will Johnson, absolute baller. Not really, I mean, I guess in a perfect world, we'd have that extra corner. But generally speaking, this is an elite roster across the board. But again, very much what I just said. Somehow, someway, year five, Super Bowl or bust with the Chiefs. I might have to erase some of my successful rebuilds if we don't get this one over the line. This is a layup. And the end of year five. Well, you know, at least the regular season has gone to a plan. 14-3, and three, I believe that's four divisional titles in five years, which is kind of what I expected. Looking at the stats, Patrick Mahomes has arguably been, at worst, the second best quarterback, for the most part, best quarterback in the league every year this rebuild. 4,700 yards, 38 tuds. Solid year to Martinez, Rasheed Rice, Kelsey, all big time numbers. Xavier Worley has been incredible in this rebuild up to an X Factor. Maybe not his best year here now, but, you know, can't all, can't have it your way every single way. Look at Leo Chanel, middle linebacker, 140 tackles with seven sacks. Surprising. Definitely surprising to say the least. Interception numbers are down across the board. But we feel pretty good about our chances right now. We felt pretty good about our chances every year. Even the years we didn't make the playoffs, I still felt like we're going to go win the Super Bowl. So we are here year five trying to do just that. First round, we have the Buffalo Bills, which I feel, I mean, good about. But, you know, it's always the Bills. 38-24, we handle business with Mahomes. 392 yards passing, four touchdowns on the day. Still surprisingly, we had to run the gauntlet here. Go to the wild card round. Now we're in the divisional round against the one seed, I assume, the 15 and 2 Jets. We have the number one offense, number five defense. You gotta wonder, they got someone. Aaron Rodgers definitely still not there. We already went up against Bucks, who have Drake May. What do the Jets got going on? It's Quinn Ewers. Makes sense that they got themselves a stud. They got Brees Hall, probably Garrett Wilson still. All right. Tough game. But it's just, we're the Chiefs. We should, we, we're the team that no one wants to play. And it, it feels like, and I don't know why. It, it, maybe it's just because we are using them. We're going to get different experience using versus if you're straight up simming them. And maybe we've signed guys that are the glue guys that using this sim help this team remain ridiculous as we handle business get to the championship game. But the reality is this has been far too stressful of a rebuild when it comes to playoff time than it should have been. We're the freaking Chiefs. We should... Walk through everyone. Luckily, Patrick Mahomes is on fire in the playoffs as we handle business and take on the Vegas Raiders with the Super Bowl on the line. Now, looking at Vegas, 16th offense. Their defense, pretty good, led by Max Crosby. They also have the number two passing defense. So that secondary has been playing at a very high level. Because we are such a passing offense, I just out of curiosity, what does this elite secondary look like? They got Fred Warner, Nate Hobbs, Rake Straw, J.J. Kyle, Mo Riggs up to 89, Superstar, Kirby Joseph. Now, yeah, it's pretty damn good. Give them credit. They have been aggressive in improving their secondary. Is it good enough to beat us? Well, you know what? I'll say I'm worried enough that we got to auto spend our XP here to make sure our team is at peak level. And I actually am at a curiosity. I want to go see what that edge rusher we traded for, traded up for. What's his raid look like? I got to see that Superstar to ever else. That trade, or straight up X Factor, that trade is not aging particularly well. And it's just a star. Luckily, we got a plus three boost there. But, hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Not the best trade, but, you know, very much a desperation move. Throwing everything at the wall, seeing what sticks here in year five. We have the, oh, let's go. Not even close. The Chiefs continue to own the Raiders. Leo Chanel, Defensive Player of the Week. Mahomes, his third straight. He is going nuclear. Five touchdowns, 300 yards, and the Kansas City Chiefs have booked their ticket to the Super Bowl for a rematch of this year's Super Bowl. Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes against Brock Purdy and the San Francisco 49ers. Their number one defense against the elite offense. And I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to cash in those three opportunities if we need to. We are finishing this with a goddamn Super Bowl and a check mark. Now before we do that, I want to look at the stats. What have we been able to achieve in this rebuild? We got Patrick Mahomes sitting at 52,000 yards passing, 400 touchdowns to pretty much 100. And it's insane. Four to one touchdown ratio. You are disgusting, sure. Damian Martinez, almost 4,000 yards rushing, 56 touchdowns in four years. Three years as a starter, which is awesome. Uh, receiving, Kelsey doing Kelsey-like things, 100. Uh, just, you know, 
I don't know. Absolute stud. 123 touchdowns, almost 17,000 yards, 1,300, almost 1,400 receptions for She Rice and almost 7,000 yards, 5,547 for Worthy. So he's averaged over 1,000 every year he's been in the league, which is all you can really ask for. Bolton, 887 tackles. We got 121 sacks on 159 TFLs. First, Chris Jones, 50 sacks for Kyle Loftus, 16 picks for Trent McDuffie. I guess kind of seeing where they stack up in a career. Uh, Mahomes, getting there. He will be there very soon. Already there for touchdowns, passing Mr. Matt Stafford as Roethlisberger in his sights. What about Mr. Kelsey? Third in receptions, passing Tony G for yards. Kelsey is third in yards. Wow. He came back for one more year, could finish second all-time, and in touchdowns, uh, just outside the top five there. So an all-time goat for Travis Kelsey. And you know what? I know he gets a lot of hate. Honestly, I do like him. I think he's all right. It's probably because I have an older brother, and like me and my brother are very similar to how Jason and Travis would be. Like My brother's the Jason. I'm very much the Travis of that dynamic, even though that sounds crazy to say that I'm, I think I'm Travis Kelsey. But the reality is, of the brother dynamic, I am... Very much not the cool, calm, collected of the two. I'm kind of the dumbass that, uh, you know, has gotten in trouble at time to time. It is what it is. Anyways, I like Kelsey, and I hope he can get another Super Bowl here. And uh, I always like beating up on the Niners. Let's go, fellas. Hopefully we don't have to hop in. I'd love to get an organic Super Bowl win. Maybe we'll come in once to see if we can hit a big bomb to Xavier Worthy and utilize that 4-2-1 speed. But here we go. Opening drive. We're tied up at 7 apiece. High scoring game. Hopefully this one does not go to overtime like this year's Super Bowl. They were able to, ooh, okay, 10-10, very close in the first half. We're going to cash in one of our three here on third and three. We're on the 36. We're in field goal range. Could be a good opportunity to take a shot here. I think Xavier Worthy, top of the screen. I maybe This looks like we just want to get this up quickly to Kelsey, which we do. And he runs away from Hufanga. He going for the highlight. I'm, hey. I'm not, I can't criticize that much because that is usually the tackle that we give up in like the Cardinals franchise. Where I try to make the big hit, my guy fucking tackles a ghost and that guy runs in for a touchdown. But a terrible attempt there from Ufanga. We get another touchdown, high scoring. Third, we're now coming in on third and one on the 38 yard line. Fringe field goal range. Xavier Worthy running a slant. Oh no, can we float that in? Yes, ooh, maybe not the best pass. But he's able to make the grab. And we're up to the two-yard line. I think they can finish this one off. I trust them. I believe in them that this is going to be 31, which it is. Defense needs a stop. They go for it on fourth down. Oh, come on. They get the conversion. 31-31. A Butker field goal. Nails it. And prevent. Oh, my God. We were very close to going back. To an overtime between the Chiefs and the Niners. But luckily, when all is said and done, even though we didn't really get any Xavier Worthy there, probably should have just audible to his streak. The Chiefs, in something that was way sweatier than it needed to be, taking it all the way to year five to get it. I thought we would get four rebuilds, uh, four Super Bowls in this rebuild. Nope. But Xavier Worthy lived up to the hype, developed into an X Factor, not necessarily became Tyreek Hill 2.0. And I, you, you can't say it's that's a you're just going from a C, speed standpoint. He's 160 pounds, looks like a big breeze could knock over Xavier. Where Tyreek Hill is a jack tank machine, but speedster with Patrick Mahomes developed into an X Factor, so clearly thrived in this KFC Chiefs situation. We're able to keep both Travis Kelsey and Chris Jones multiple times. We thought we we're gonna lose them. We kept the dynasty together and we're able to get one last Super Bowl ring as we assume Kelsey and those guys right off into the sunset so that'll do it for me today guys thank you very much for watching i will spin this one just a little bit because this rebuild has been inspired maybe more so because of the combine just happened it's the, one of the big exciting winners from the combine if there's anyone else that you saw specifically from the combine that you think would go to a specific team and make a really interesting rebuild let me know in the comment section below i'm open to doing that maybe for our next one uh tomorrow monday start the week hopefully we get uh, honey hunters that is my plan to get a new episode of the honey hunters out to you guys uh, but that will do it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you're the first time stopping by, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Until next time, it's your boy C4. Say peace. I love you. Have a good one.